Hey there, this is Dan, and today I want to answer a question that I got from Maddie over Twitter. So Maddie writes, hey Dan, I had a question. For someone who wants to learn to code but has absolutely no knowledge on coding, where should I start? And I think that is a fantastic question. So a couple of thoughts on that. Um, first of all, it's great that you're asking this question, Maddie, because um, I think it's good to be somewhat analytical about this stuff, right? It's a good idea to not simply jump in and think everything is just going to fall into place. I mean, in most cases, it will, and it's better to get started than to wait. But um, it doesn't hurt to actually think about, you know, how you want to approach this. Like, if you want to learn how to code, what's the best way to do it? Because, you know, realistically, this is like a multi-year endeavor to become a coder. And um, it just it's just going to pay off if you're smart about um, teaching you all these skills that you need. Okay, so the question was, you know, I want to learn how to code, but I have absolutely no question. Uh, I have I have absolutely no knowledge in coding. Where should I start? So I think the first step here would be to think about why you want to learn how to code, because that's going to inform, you know, if you have that goal, that's going to inform how you should go about achieving it, in my opinion. So you know, some people, they want to learn how to code just because they're interested in it. And it seems like, you know, maybe it seems like a cool thing to do, like a cool skill to pick up. That could be one reason. Um, another reason could be that someone wants to uh, to scratch their own itch. You know, maybe they're working on something. Um, you know, th maybe their job involves working with a bunch of uh, spreadsheets and Excel tables, and they're frustrated with the work they have to do manually. And then they're, they're thinking, oh, you know, I could actually write some program to do this for me and it would save me a bunch of time it would probably be very enjoyable and um it would make me more effective at what i already do right or i want to build a home automation system or you know there could be several other reasons where it's a scratch your own itch kind of situation where you're thinking hey if i learn how to code this is really going to help me achieve some other goal um you know, it's going to help me some solve some other problem or it's going to help me make some progress on some other project that I'm working on. The third option I can think of is um, some people do it for the money. I mean, right now, developers are highly in demand. Um, it's one of the high, highest paid professions in the world right now. And so you, if, if you can get in on that for career reasons, um, that could obviously also be a very strong uh, motivation, right? If you can train yourself to get a job as a web developer a mobile app developer, or, you know, some other kind of software developer, that could be a life changing, uh, you know, a life life changing transformation for for many people. And so there are all these different reasons why people want to learn coding. And I think it's a good idea to become aware of your own reasons there, and why you want to become a coder, um, in order to decide what the best way is to go about it. Um, because there will be like for me, one thing that is really important for someone who wants to learn how to code, you know, when I think about this problem, I think it's super important to do it in a way that motivates you. And like I said, you know, this is not going to be easy and this is going to take um, several months to several years to get anywhere, anywhere meaningful. And so if you can, if you can be clear about what your motivations are, then it's going to make it so much easier for you to find the right resources and, um, to, to then work with them on a continuing basis. Because what I've seen happen several times now is that people jump into this and because they're not clear on their, on their actual motivation, on their actual goals, it's very easy to kind of slip out of that um, practicing, you know, let your schedule slip, stop practicing, and then there's no progress. So it's super important, in my opinion, to um, decide on your goals there and find out what is really your core motivation, why you want to become a coder. Um, I can speak a little bit about, you know, how, how I got into coding and what my motivation was. And then maybe that's something that um, is going to help you also identify your own motivation and then see how you can go about it. So when I got into coding, I was, um, I, was I guess, uh, relatively young by comparison. So I, I just got interested in programming when I was maybe seven years old or so, you know, I could like maybe read like a little bit. I grew up in Germany and um, I, we, I, I didn't speak English at all. And so we, um, my parents got me this Commodore 64 computer that, um, 
that you could program in the basic language. So uh, this is a very simple, you know, old school programming language. And uh, the computer came with a couple of books in English that were talking about how this basic stuff works. And obviously I had no idea, you know, what I was doing there, but I was just fascinated by this machine. So it was, for me, it was a very sort of visceral motivation just to play with this machine and figure out what it was doing. And I can't really tell you like what was so motivating for me about it, because clearly, you know, I didn't think of making more money. Um, I didn't think of solving problems that I had. I mean, you know, I was just a carefree, like seven or eight year old. So that wasn't the motivation. There was just something about coding and about computers that I found utterly fascinating. And that's what sucked me into this. And, you know, if you jump ahead like 10 years later, then that's where I got my first job and, and started working as a programmer on the site. And so, you know, this could be another option where, where you just want to become a coder and you just, you're fascinated by it. And that's, that's your main motivation. Now, I told this story because, um, it maybe also gives you some insight on how you would go about learning how to code. So if it's just something that you enjoy and you enjoy playing with, then start making these little experiments, you know, like set like little goals for your, for yourself. Like, Hey, can I make this, uh, you know, can I change the color of the screen? Like, can I show, um, some text there? Can I, um, you know, I'm not sure if that these days is probably not that interesting anymore. If you can change the, the color of text and whatnot, but, you know, try and come up with little motivations for you and little motivating projects for you that you can work on. Because in my opinion, the way you want to learn, you don't want to sit down and say, I want to learn how to code, but you want to say your mindset should be, I want to solve this little problem and coding or learning Python or whatever other language you want to learn. That's, that's my tool, right? It's like, it's like you're a carpenter and that's your hammer and, um, a carpenter. Well, few people, I guess would sit down and be like, oh yeah, I want to be a carpenter, but you know, maybe they would start with like, Hey, I want to make this chair. How do I get there? You know, how, what do I need to learn to be able to do it? Because certainly to make a chair, you don't have to be the world's best carpenter and you don't have to know all of this stuff, you know? And likewise with, uh, if you want to make a little game or if you want to change the color of your screen on your computer, you don't have to be, you know, the best programmer in the world. You don't have to have a PhD in computer science. You just have to learn these very specific, um, skills. And, um, then, then you're golden, you know, you can start with your first experiment and you keep building more of these experiments and that's going to help you assemble this knowledge map and just learn more about this whole field. And then things are going to, going to start to come together for you. Now, um, of course the question is, okay, now I have this idea. Let's say I want to make a little game. How do I get there? And, um, the most important part is that you pick very, very simple goals, you know, pick maybe if you're saying like, I want to make a game. When I think back, you know, the little games that I wanted to make, um, they were pretty high fidelity and you know, they didn't like, if you, if you want to make a game, like the snake, you know, the old school, like snake game on your Nokia, like non smartphone or, you know, something like super Mario or something like that, that actually takes a lot of work and you need to know a lot of stuff to, to get there. You know, you need to know some graphics programming, input processing, um, you know, maybe you need some design skills and this would be a fairly complex project. So what I would suggest is like to drastically lower your aim there so that you have these little things that you can achieve in uh, just a couple of days or maybe like a week or two at most. And, um, once you've picked something there, um, you know, like how can I, I don't know, take the spreadsheet and export it in a different way and then calculate some numbers or something. Once you've got a very small goal, then you can start just looking around on the internet and trying to find ways you can solve these problems with programming, you know, and a good way to do it is like just punch in a couple of keywords and then add the programming language of your choice. So maybe Python, uh, which is the uh, language that I love and that I enjoy working with. And that I think is a great choice for someone to get started because it can, it, it can scale so well and it can help you also later on get a job as, as a developer. And, um, then you're going to see a bunch of stuff that maybe you don't understand in the beginning, but that's going to allow you to, that's going to tell you a whole lot, right? Like then you're going to see stuff that you've never seen before. So you can Google for that again, and maybe look for a book that seems like it would explain you some, um, some of the things that you saw there. 
And so it's like you, you just got to start with this one goal, with this one motivation, and then kind of spread out from there and um, start searching for the missing bits and pieces that, that you need. I mean, in the beginning, it absolutely also makes sense to get some targeted education, like a Python basics course, and you can find really good ones on, uh, on YouTube here, or um, you can also search for them on the internet. And that's probably a good way just to kind of get the basics of the language under, under your belt. But I would actually not front load that. I would do that after you came up with one, two, three, four ideas of actual problems you want to solve with coding, right? Because that's, that's going to vastly change your approach. Like if you're saying like, hey, I want to become a coder because I want, want to make a ton of money. I want to get, get a job as a coder. Personally, I'm not sure if I would recommend that. But if you wanted to do it, then uh, that would obviously change how you go about it, right? Like maybe it's more and more of an economic decision. You could say, hey, okay, you know, if I can make like a six figure in income uh, with a programming job, then um, I'm going to go ahead and pay someone like 10 or $20,000 to go through a boot camp, Or I'm going to sign up for some private coaching and have someone um, actually teach me how to program and get me started, right? Like then it makes, all of a sudden it makes a lot of sense to invest your resources that way if you can make an economic argument for this. Whereas if you're just learning it for the love of programming, maybe that's not something you're comfortable with, right? You're not comfortable with uh, investing so much money in learning the skills. And um and yeah, so, you know, I, I know this was a bit of a rambly answer and I didn't really point you to specific resources, but I felt like just trying to give you um, a good mindset to think about this stuff would actually be more valuable than saying like, hey, you know, I would buy this book and I would buy that book. Like, heck, like maybe you shouldn't even buy anything in the beginning and just kind of see how far you can get with free resources to see how you like this. But the most important thing to repeat that is to have a specific, you know, very narrow, very small goal that you want to work on, a very small project that you want to complete that has some actual benefit for you so that you feel motivated to go through with uh, learning how to program. All right, Maddie, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for asking the question and uh, have a great day.